So you know how earlier in today's show I was bringing up the idea of rainy day topics. Topics that I feel I can make a regular old video commentary about, that I have some sort of idea as to where we can go, that we don't necessarily need to talk about now. This article and this idea popped up literally a month ago. But because I am in Las Vegas, and because I have very little time, hopefully, to record videos whilst on the go, we gotta pre-record some stuff, we gotta get some conversations going, and I wanted to respond to an article published by Jeff Patterson on Canucks Army from, what, September 3rd? Something like that? Take a look at this piece as it pertains to Vancouver Canucks captain Quinn Hughes. Here are five keys, J. Pat writes, to Canucks captain Quinn Hughes topping the 100-point mark this season. Considering that only one NHL defenseman has crested 100 points in the past 30 years, the notion of Quinn Hughes reaching triple digits this season seems like a long shot. Then again, it's important to note that we are talking about the reigning Norris Trophy winner who finished with 92 points last season on a Vancouver Canucks team that sputtered offensively over the last couple of months of the year. J. Pat writes that this is not a prediction that Hughes will reach the 100-point mark, but it's also a recognition that the hockey world should have learned by now not to bet against the Canucks captain. Hughes set the Canucks franchise record for points by a defenseman with 68 two seasons ago and has since rewritten the book twice, following up with 76 and 92 point totals. Now before we dive into what J. Pat writes about, the five keys, let's go out there and look at Quinn Hughes and his splits for the 2023-2024 season, courtesy of ESPN. The reason I think these are important is because if you dive into the month-by-month -month breakdowns, you'll see that Quinn Hughes did, in fact, have more points in the pre-All-Star period of the season compared to after. He had 62 points in 49 games played pre-All-Star break and 12 goals, which is really nuts when you think about it. Do the math on that and you can figure out that Quinn finished off the year with 30 points in the final 33 games of the season. He did go under a point per game in the second half. Which, I mean, if you're doing the math there, 30 points in 33 games is still amazing for a defenseman, but it certainly is not at the same level as his 62 points in 49 to open up the year. He had 22 points in 15 games in November, 13 points in 13 games in January. He then dipped a little bit in February scoring and then kind of kicked himself back into gear towards the end of the season. But for Quinn Hughes, he was kind of a product of the Vancouver Canucks offense kind of withering away in the second half. I mean, he can only do so much when he's doing most of his work from the back end. Nevertheless, he still led the NHL in defenseman points this previous season, a mark that is a little bit shy of what Eric Carlson had accomplished the year prior when he reached 100 points in San Jose. But for Quinn Hughes, this idea of him reaching 100 despite this setback is written about here by J. Pat. So heading back over onto his article, the first thing that he writes about for Quinn Hughes hitting 100 is knowing that it's possible. Quinn Hughes has had a taste, and that's half the battle. He was a 100-point pace player with 51 points through the team's first 41 games of the year. He knows it's a legitimate possibility to get to 100. If he had finished with 75 last season, it would have seemed like an unreasonable proposition to expect him to find 25 additional points. But he finished with 92. He wasn't far off 100, and if the Canucks had three additional games in their schedule, Hughes likely would have reached the 100-point mark. Eight points is an average week for the soon-to-be 25-year-old, so he has the context to work with knowing what it will take to generate the added offense necessary to be a 100-point scorer. That's true. Definitely don't want to discredit that idea. It's really close, 92 to 100. I mean, asking Quinn Hughes for eight more points on the year seems like an easier task than asking Elias Pettersson for 11 more points on the year, because he had 89. I get it, forward defenseman, it's a little bit different, but when Quinn Hughes is every second pass on the power play, you kind of expect him to rack up points in the ways that he does. And that actually is written about here next in J. Pat's piece. While it's true that Hughes had more power play points in the second half of the season than he did in the first half, overall the team encountered power play struggles after the All-Star break. From the start of February onwards, the Canucks power play operated at 18.8% and ranked 24th in the league in that stretch. Really? It was that bad? Ay, ay, ay. 
With personnel and coaching changes in the offseason, the Canucks will surely aim to find more consistency with the man advantage, and Hughes should play a massive role in that. While JT Miller is likely to continue to run the power play at the half wall, the puck is still going to find his way back to Hughes at the top of the umbrella. As such, he'll still get plenty of puck touches. If Hughes had picked up just one additional power play point per week after the All-Star break, he would have easily gained the eight points needed to get to 100 for the season. That's a really good way to put it. Oi, oi, oi. Jeff Patterson is blowing my mind here. If he just had one extra power play point a week after the All-Star break, he would have had 100. And that kind of blows my mind when I think about it. That's crazy. The article then has a few extra things here. I don't want to dive into all of it. I do like to leave a little bit of extra in the article if you want to go out there and read it yourself. But the next point is interesting here too. Scoring off the rush. Rick Tockett has made it abundantly clear that the Vancouver Canucks need to generate more offense this coming season, and that should play into Quinn Hughes' hands. Too often in the playoffs, it seemed the Canucks waited for the perfect play to present itself before taking their chances. This resulted in a lack of shots, limited opportunities, and ultimately struggles to produce scoring plays. An injection of speed through the lineup over the offseason should lead to increased rush chances for the Canucks, and nobody keys the transition more than Quinn Hughes. This doesn't mean the Canucks will be reckless in their pursuit of scoring opportunities, and Hughes has shown he doesn't need to cheat positionally to lead the attack. It's just a slight tweak to the overall organizational mindset that should help the Canucks improve their transition game and ultimately do a little more to test opposing netminders. Converting on a few additional rush opportunities should help boost the team's offensive totals, and as a result, Quinn Hughes should benefit from that. So, more goals on the rush, more PD to Besser one-timers, more Daniel Sprong walking in there and sniping it, more Pedersen low shot rebounds for Jake DeBrusque, more Pia Suter throwing it out for a JT Miller shot, more of this on the rush play. And you might see some more Quinn Hughes points, because most of the time, who gets the rush started? It's Quinn. He's behind his goal line, he throws a long pass up to the Canucks blue line, and up and away it's gone. Maybe it's Dakota Joshua pulling off some nice magic finding Connor Garland out in front once more. If the Canucks are able to utilize the extra forwards they had gotten, Danton Heinen, Kiefer Sherwood, Jake DeBrusque, all these guys that helped them with offense, then who knows how many extra points the Canucks can get scoring on the rush. They don't always need to set up and hold the puck in the Ozone for 40 seconds, ragging it around before ending up shooting on goal. They can just try to rip it from wherever. Brock Besser, I think, might be one of the biggest guys who is capable of doing this. He had a lot of goals this previous season. Tap-ins in front, rebounds, in tight dangles. But remember rookie Besser? That guy was scoring on the rush like half his goals, honestly. He would walk right in, just get by a guy, shoot, and he'd score. Brock Besser in his rookie season, I feel, might have had the best wrist shot we had ever seen in a Vancouver Canucks uniform. And I'm including prime Marcus Naslin in that. It's just prime Marcus Naslin lasted for a lot longer than rookie Brock Besser did, because ever since he got injured, I mean, he ended up changing. He still had a career year in goals this previous season, though, although the goals were a lot different than the goals he was scoring in his rookie season. You get what I mean, it's a lot of nuance here. Either way, there are a few extra things that J-Pat talks about here in the article. He talks about increased shot totals, as well as bounce-back performances from those around him. Now, I think the last point is the most interesting one. He's referring to, of course, Elias Pettersson. He's talking about Philip Hronik, both guys who had stellar first half of the years, but who dropped off in the second half. These guys are going to be part of a machine in Vancouver, wherein the expectations are higher than they were last year. And guess what? Last year, the Canucks were first in the Pacific. So having Hronik, Pettersson understand how this feels, understand what an 82-game season with this team and this coaching staff and these drills feels like, it's going to well-equip them for the upcoming season and hopefully lead to them scoring more points too. Which in turn will lead to more Quinn Hughes points, which might in turn lead to a 100-point season. Now, obviously, it's a lot easier to say, hey, he can just get a little bit better and he can get to 100 points. But at the same time, we can't just go out there and come to conclusions like that right away. For Elias Pettersson, he went from 102 points to 89. He declined. JT Miller went from 99 points to 82, and then he went back up to 103. So guys will go up and guys will go down. If Quinn Hughes has an inferior season point production-wise, I wouldn't be surprised. But of course, we want to hope for bigger and better things. And the thing is, Quinn Hughes is so good that it's definitely possible here. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the idea of Quinn Hughes potentially hitting 100 points on the season? And do you think it's possible? 
The article will be linked in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share 99. And bye. <laughs>